today, I don't know. We can turn to Romans 2. We'll see if this lines up. I don't know. When I think I know, I don't know. And when I think I don't know, then I know. So in other words, I don't know. But we're going to try to start here and see how it goes. You never know, right? I guess I would just feel like just starting by saying that some of you may or may not know have ever heard of Tony Evans, the preacher. So he's a well-known preacher. I used to listen to him. I have no, I have no qualms with his teachings. I just kind of go. I don't listen to radio or TV preachers anymore. Most generally, I don't. So I, I don't have any beef with Tony Edwin, but I just don't listen to him anymore. But, but I thought I saw where he had resigned his church. Is that right? Is that yeah? So I've heard, and I don't know if it's true. He's he's preached for forty something years, and now he's he's sat down to preaching. I guess and he's going to kind of do whatever. Work, work on whatever, I don't know what that needs to be working internally I'm not here casting nothing on him I not do that but it's been on my mind uh, I thought about it I, I think he's preached for 40 something years he was a very, very intelligent man super intelligent well, well read well versed in the Bible and a very intellectual speaker, uh, very, very well with his words. And I thought, you know, when I heard that, it kind of bothered me to an extent, to where that even though I don't listen to him, but for no other reason than that's just me, uh, it kind of bothered me that someone would preach 40 years, dedicate that much time to their ministry, and then for whatever reason, just uh, walk away from it. Uh, he, he says, or it's been said that perhaps he did something in the past is what I had heard. Now, I'm not, I ain't throwing no stones at him. I'm just trying to get you to where I am, okay? But apparently, according to him, and he didn't say what it was, and it ain't nobody's business. I don't suppose what it is, but he Something in his past that he did many, many years ago, he felt like that that is kind of, I guess, is the reason why he's stepping down now. I don't know anything no more than that. And if I did know, I don't think I would say what it is. And I don't know, I don't, I don't know. And he ain't saying it. But it would lead me to think when I heard that and I'm driving and listening and thinking at different times of, that what what would have what could have what led him to that conclusion? I, I don't know. Maybe one day it will come out, but I don't. That's not of any interest to me. I don't care what the man did. Uh, as far as that goes, uh, I, I don't want to be in that number. Uh, do you? Uh, but the topic 
began to roll around, it means that we, we get attacked as Christians by an adversary, the devil, and his demons. Now, we often attribute attacks to the devil. The devil did this, and the devil did that, and Satan did this, and Satan did that. Probably not. You're probably not that important that you're going to get their attention, but there are demons. Multitudes of demons. Fallen angels are demons, right? A third of the stars of heaven fell, and they are now what once used to be. Uh, angels in heaven are now demons on earth, and it's not the devil or Satan that's coming against you as so much as it's the de a devil or a demon that's coming against you. Only God is omnipotent. Only God is omniscient. Only God can be everywhere at once. Only God can know everything that there is. Only God, amen, is all-knowing and all-powerful and almighty. Satan can only be in one location at one point. Do we know that? Did anybody know that before today? Satan himself can only be in one place at one time. But demons, he has legions of demons and hundreds of millions, if not billions, no doubt, of demons. But they attack us. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and high places. Today we're going to go out. Amen. We're going to go about our business. And none of us most likely will be into a physical altercation. Not a one of us. Today, not yesterday, probably not tomorrow. None of us are going to go out here and fight, have to fight physically against an atheist or against a Satanist. But we are going to have to wrestle in our mind. We are going to have to wrestle in our spirit. We're not going to wrestle even in flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. And in, in darkness in high places. Many of us this morning perhaps was already attacked by the enemy before even you ever made it to church. I know I was. Before I ever, amen, ever got ready for church, I was already under attack by the enemy. Already. Nobody came to me and punched me in the eye. Nobody called me a dirty name. Amen. But I was under attack from the enemy already. Amen. Hours before church began. And here lately my ministries have been under attack. Here lately my ministries have been under attack by the enemy. And I look at Tony Evans, and that's a sad, uh, a sad thing. I don't know what he's going through, but I'm very sympathetic towards him. I'm very, very sympathetic towards him, and, and I pray that the Lord will help him. Now, is he really, amen, uh, I don't know, I can't address all that, but, but has he been attacked to the point to where that he's gotten out of the ministry? Has the devil attacked him and latched onto him? To where the point that he thinks that he, he has to throw in the towel? That's a scary thought. Now I can't say because I don't know. But I know that I have been attacked so violently in a sense of saying in so many different angles that I have honestly, if it hadn't have been for God intervening, I would have quit my ministries. Not the church necessarily, but back out of the church, I ain't saying that. But I'm saying my ministries. I got ministries. Now, how is it possible that you going about doing good things, working for the Lord, and been sacrificing for the Lord? How is it possible that that can be flipped around and you feel like that 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 ministry is under attack and, and almost successfully so? And there's been I believe the Lord has intervened. I, I most certainly know that. He has intervened in to keep that from happening. And I have told the Lord directly, if you don't want me doing this ministries, if you don't want me to do what I'm doing, then let me know and pull the rug on this stuff. How is that possible? Joe, how is it possible that our minds can get so entangled up that doing good deeds and doing the works of the Lord with fruits, with the spirit, with affirmations and confirmations. How 
how is it possible to get our minds so confused and bewildered that we would actually ask God, if it's not your will, Lord, I'll quit. I've said that to the Lord. If you ain't in it, then I'll, I'll quit. If you ain't in what I'm doing and you don't want me to do what I'm doing, then just quit. No, just stop it. And if me being a preacher can get attacked like that, anybody can get attacked. I'm not saying I'm anything special, but I'm, I am saying that I have experienced a lot in my life. I've seen a lot in my life. And I've seen God do some things that only God can do as we all have. But yet the difference between you and I is I've got to come up here and still preach Jesus even though I'm still kind of uh, sometimes. And if, if I can get confused and confounded sometimes the difference is I have to come up here and continue to sell Jesus to you. And I think that's why the Lord helps me the way that he does. Because if you all knew what I dealt with before I got to the pulpit, it's a wonder that there would be any, any preaching at all. The devil don't want preaching to go out. And I'm not the only one. There's preachers being attacked across the board. There's Christians being attacked across the board. Uh, you know firsthand, amen, the, the, uh, the wrestling that we do and the, the doubting and the confusion that we run across. And, and the deal is I go and talk to people and, and I hope to God that I'm telling them the right things. I hope that I'm telling them the right things. But there's been a couple to three severe incidences that have happened that could have absolutely derailed my ministries in one fell swoop. We're not playing with kindergarten demons here. We're playing with real things that can really do destruction in a very short period of time. All I've got to do is pick up the phone and make a phone call. And it's over. I call Jim Moore and it's over. I call the chaplains at the hospital and it's over. It's over. The attacks, amen, on, on God's people. And I'm not going to get into right now, at least I don't think that I will, as to what the attacks pertain to, other than the fact that uh, uh, doing good works and doing works and the devil will come come at you. And, and it might not even be registering with you right now because I might not even be explaining things enough to where that you can understand. But if you take Tony Evans for, for, for instance, why would he preach 40-something years and then whatever it was that he did back in the day, why wasn't that addressed during the 40 years? I mean, has, I'm just speculating. Has he come under attack, perhaps? Kind of like me? And the devil has just flipped the page on him? At any time... Any preacher that's a true preacher can be taken out by health or by uh, mental issues or by spiritual issues. And we must stay on guard. And I'm not here today because I'm a superman. I'm here today because I've got a super God that has done some super things for me to enable me to continue to come up. And, and, and to preach the gospel. Amen. Uh, 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 as well as I do. Amen. Which is... It's, not what I would. Uh, let's read here. Romans one twenty four. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself for Thou that judgest doesn't doest, doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou 
this, O man, that judges them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelations at the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality and eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth and obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, uh, uh, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which shew the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness in their thoughts to the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Not only do we have to go about in this life, amen, trapped in a, a fallible physical body, not only are we sick and afflicted, not only do we have mental anguishes and depressions and oppressions, not only do we have shortcomings within ourselves, not only do we realize, amen, uh, realize our frailty, and we've got so much against us, Jerry. I mean, at every turn, we've got so much against us. There's days when you feel like you've done everything right, and then you have to contend with a false accuser of the brethren. How many of us have lived a good day? You've felt the presence of God. You've seen God work. And then that night you feel like you killed somebody. Is that true? How many? And you sit there and you analyze, what? who did I run over? Who did I kill? You feel like you killed somebody. It's the false accuser of the brethren. Not only do we have to contend with our own frailty and our shortcomings and, and the shortcomings of our family and the shortcomings of our friend and the relationships here and the relationship there and working with this person and working with that person. Going and rubbing elbows with the public. My goodness, no wonder we're all at our wit's end. No wonder we're all at our wit's end and we fill up our own thin eyes exhausted in mind and body and you can't even go and get a nutritious meal anymore. Even the food we eat is against us. Even the food we eat is contaminated and makes us sick. You believe that? Additives, preservatives, there's no rest nowhere. The air we breathe is contaminated. The water we drink is contaminated. The foods we eat, we're surrounded and we go to bed and we sleep and we wake up tired. How many of us have went to bed and slept all oh, night long? You went to bed early, by the way. 8.30 at night, pour out. Hey, when you sleep all night long, you wake up and two hours later, you're ready for a nap. What's wrong? What's wrong? Listen, we've got a lot against us. I mean, we've got a lot against us. Even now, we're starting to see foods that ain't... Uh, they're man-made foods now. Remember, we've seen that on TikTok, maybe, or YouTubes. We've seen the watermelons and the cantaloupes and the grapes and the this and that. It's not in the, in the, in the meats. I'm not making this stuff up. What are they? They're, they're attacking our food supplies, our water supplies. It's got fluoride and chlorine in it. What 
does that then? It causes you to have Alzheimer's and dementia. That's what it does. It attacks you. What I'm trying to say is we're in this last day being attacked physically, mentally. They're using the very food. Did you know people are getting letters in the mail to cease and desist from farming? Did you know that? In the northern states, they're telling the farmers not to produce any more food. They're killing their cattle and their, their pigs and their chickens. What are they trying to do? Call the food shortage. Boy, when the Bible says the last days, there's never been times like this, nor never shall be again, they got us wrapped up. And we find ourselves struggling to come to church. It's very difficult sometimes because we've got to fight the devil before we ever come to church. And, and, and there's a chance. There's a chance that if we get help today, there's a chance we may wake up tomorrow and the devil will attack us. How many people have woke up on Monday morning and it's an all-day battle because of Sunday, but because of the blessing you got on Sunday? Stuff is stacked against us. We've got a lot of stuff against us. And then we've got the judgment. This is one of them gloomy days. This is one of them gloomy. It's a good thing it rained. I didn't expect for it to rain today. Did you? But I want to be honest with the church. I want you to realize, amen, that you ain't the only one that's thinking these things. I want you to realize that, amen, that things, amen, are circling about kind of like they did in the, in the 1800s. They circle the wagons. They're circling the wagons around us, and it's going to get worse and worse. And we're going to have to run to Jesus. Where could I go but to the Lord? Amen. They're attacking us from every angle. The devil is attacking our minds and our bodies even when we try to do good deeds. Who would have ever thought years ago, how could you even possibly think that doing the work of the Lord, amen, that the Lord would want you to quit that work? Why would anybody possibly think that? But we've been this close. We've been this close. But the Lord has always come through, not with thunderings and lightnings. Not with thunderings and lightnings, but with a scripture here, or text there, or song there, or someone that you met that said something that the Lord had already told you. It's the little things. Sometimes you're going to get a big blessing. Sometimes you're going to get a big shower, but oftentimes it's just a little bit just to keep you going because we walk by faith, not by sight. He's not going to give it all to us because it's still a faith thing, right? It's still a faith thing. So if I can get attacked for what I do, if I can question God and say, God, if I'm doing something wrong, if this is not your will, then I'll call a radio station. I'll call the hospitals and I'll shut this thing down. But listen, it's the devil that's attacking. And a lot of times he will attack you where you are, even though you're as innocent as a baby. He will mess with your mind. Did you know I've heard of people story after story after story Dwayne, when he got saved, my brother, when he got saved, he was afraid he'd flip somebody off so he'd always keep his fist closed. Sounds odd, don't it? He would go keep his fist closed because he's afraid the devil got in his mind that he'd flip the people off. So he'd keep his fist closed. The pressure of taking the glory of God and the the peace that you can have and the devil torment your mind. There was someone else that told me here uh, uh, less than a year ago uh, that said that when they got saved, they said that, uh, what was it that, that with them? I can't remember what it was. But someone else wouldn't tell the time. You'd ask them what time it was and they wouldn't tell you the time for fear that they would tell you a lie. Because they was afraid their watch wasn't the right time. That normal people, hard, good, good, sensible people. But the devil got in the noodle. Did the devil ever get in your brain? Does the devil ever get in your mind and tinker around in things? You ask a Christian what time it was, he wouldn't tell you the time. Because he's afraid that he would tell you the wrong time and lie to you. That's torment. You go to a waitress. 
And, and that waitress asked you how the meal tasted. It wasn't a very good meal. And they told them that, that it was tasted good. And, and they went about it. And, and it felt like they told them a lie because it wasn't a good meal. And they asked their mama. They said, well, you know, the waitress asked me if I liked my meal. And I said I did, but I really didn't. And the mama said, well, just let it go. The Lord will forgive you. Don't let, don't let that worry you. But he couldn't stop. And he went to the waitress and told her, I told you a lie. Wow, that shows you the power of the devil and how that he can torment good, meaning Christians and good-hearted people and how he can get inside your mind and torment you over the smallest deeds. Drive away from a gas pump without paying. He was two cents over. You ever heard that one besides me tell you about it? If you die, you go to hell because you... The devil torments people's minds. God doesn't want you to have a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. So we're surrounded, amen, by, by preachers that preach unwholesome doctrines. We're surrounded by uh, constant condemnations everywhere you turn. You can't have a good day. Uh, amen, and the good day that you do you, you have, you've got chattering in your brain. Everything's always a chattering. Uh, amen, there's always something to contend with. Uh, there's always somebody that said something uh, that should have said that. Uh, they didn't mean nothing by it, uh, but they should have at least had wisdom enough uh, not to have said that. We've got all these things to contend with, and then we've got judgment to deal with at the end of it all. That's a heavy burden. Think about it. All this stuff you've gone through, and then after all, you've got judgment to deal with. I don't think the judgment seat of Christ is going to be a pleasant thing to you. Honestly, Sister Deborah, I wish I could sit here and dance around and holler and, and say it was going to be a happy day, but I'm... I'm I'm not convinced that it's going to be a good day for the church. The Bible says that we'll stand in boldness in that day. We're not going to be crippled with fear like many people will be. But we still got the judgment bar and your works are going to be burned up to see what kind of works they were. You believe that? It says so. In the Bible, your works will be burnt to see what kind of works they were. Whether it be gold and silver or whether it be wood, stubble, and hay. There's going to be a lot of Christians that's going to go to heaven, but when their works is burnt up, they're going to have works of wood, stubble, and hay. And I don't want wood, stubble. I'm trying to work too hard for the kingdom for it to be burned up in my face. All your way. The devil torments my mind over that. I'll tell you that. You see, you do all this work. You run the roads. You go late into the night. And you do all of this, and then your works is going to be burned up like wood, stubble, and hay. Well, if that don't put a damper in your skip, this is what we're up against. This is not a pleasant message, but this is a real message. And I really want you to think. I really want you to think. It's something much more than just making it to heaven. Oh, it's important. We want to get to heaven. And you can only do that through Jesus Christ. But there's other things that we must look at. There's other things that we must deal with. How many of us this morning feel like that we're saved, but sometimes we feel like that we've spent hell wide open? Come on. I mean, I'm a preacher. I feel the power of God. I'm, I'm saved in the Holy Ghost this morning. But sometimes I feel like I can spit hell wide open. This is the reality of Christendom. This is the reality of true Christianity. Amen. Anybody that suffers these things, I would say, amen, is assured of salvation because it's those that never give any mind to it. How many people have you ever talked to? Amen. And they just are dismissive. They don't go to church. They don't read the Bible. But they got saved years ago. Yeah, I got saved back years ago. But they're not serious about it. They just cast it around. Uh, I'm going to heaven. I'm not going to have to worry about the mark of the beast. I, I'm going to get raptured up. And if you stand up next to the world, you couldn't tell them from the world. You couldn't tell them from the world because they don't have the spirit of Christ. Uh, they've been they're selfish. Uh, they've been they're self-absorbed. Uh, they're self-righteous. Uh, they're uncaring, uh, ungrateful, uh, judgmental. Condemning? God, I don't ever want to 
be that way. Sometimes it's inherent in us to judge when we meet somebody we are already cast an impression on, right? You don't just meet somebody and walk away with a blank in your brain. You have formed some kind of opinion of that person. You have formed some kind of opinion if they come up to you and ask you for a dollar and they stink. Amen. You have already formed an opinion. We need to treat them with compassion and mercy, but we need to also be stern. Don't be a sucker, if I can say that word. Don't be duped. The grandkids told me here a while back, one of them said, Papa, we've been giving money away to homeless people. They wanted Papa to pat him on the head. Good boy. Papa didn't do that. Papa said, you need to use wisdom, son. Use wisdom. Because there's people out there that's going to take you for everything that you got. Just because you do a good deed, you can hurt yourself. You need that money too. I'm all for people giving. I'm all, but let the Lord lead you. He's just a child and trying to learn. I don't want to put too much on him, but I want him to realize that there's people that will take and take and take and take and take from you until you're without, and then they'll move on to the next time and suck them dry. Oh, God, they come out of nowhere. Romans 3, let's jump to 3, 9. What then? Are we better than they? No, and no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. We got to get Jesus on our mind. We got to get religious out of religion out of our mind and get Jesus on our mind. Somebody the other day, I was talking to a friend of mine. He's a chaplain. He said he was went to a, a room and was talking to someone. I'll, I'll say who it was a Church of Christ. And he, he, this chaplain used to be a Church of Christ. And he, he told the Church of Christ chaplain, he said, "You left the Church of Christ Church. Why'd you do that for?" And he said, well, I just don't, I don't believe 100% of what they teach anymore. He said, I agree with a lot of things they teach, but I don't, I ain't 100% agree, so I left the Church of Christ. And you know what they think, don't you? Church of Christ or hell. That's what they tell you. That's what it is. You're either Church of Christ or you're going to hell. But I know other people who say it's this way or that or hell. I know that. But they ain't biblical. So, this man continued with him and said, he said, I wasn't going to argue with him, but he said, you know, I don't agree with everything that's taught in the Church of Christ, so I left the Church of Christ. What then are we not better than they? No, no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Recognize who you are. Recognize what you aren't. And accept Jesus. You know, we're strapped around all the time. Do this, do that, don't do this, and don't do that. We're strapped around all the time. People at work, they tease me a lot of times about, who'd you hit over the head with the Bible today? Did you step on anybody's toe? No, I didn't like that. It ain't like that. People think that preachers are supposed to step on your toes and rub for your feathers and make you mad. No, we preach a, a, a gospel of hope. We preach a Christ that can save and to heal and deliver. We don't step on people's toes and try to agitate people or aggravate people. The gospel, amen, is not meant for that purpose, amen, only to those, uh, amen, that know not the truth. But I don't sit here and preach, amen, you've got to do this or that or the other. I preach Jesus Christ, amen. It's for you to decipher. It's for you to seek out your own salvation, as the Bible says, with fear and trembling. Amen. I'm not going to tell you this or that or the other. Amen. I leave that for you and let the Lord deal with you and let the Lord deal with your heart concerning the matter. Amen. I don't want to 
step on your toes. I don't want to ruffle your feathers. I don't want to agitate you or aggravate you. I just want to tell you the baseline specifics. And that is Jesus is all that matters. Amen. But to conform to the image of Christ according to how he directs you. How he directs you. Every life is unique. Every life is is, is fraught with difficulties and unique circumstances. Amen. I mean, you can't ask nobody, and everybody has an answer. Amen. I mean, to your dilemma or to your crisis. Amen. I mean, you can ask me my opinion, and my opinion may be wrong for your life, but right for somebody else. How many times have you given advice or received advice, and you knew it wasn't right? It's not right for your life. It might be right, but it ain't right for me at this season, at this time. And we get it all messed up. And then we got people spewing stuff. Amen. That's causing more trouble. Amen. Than it ever helps. Amen. They, they want to amen, tell you something, but they don't have an answer for it. Years ago, somebody came to an altar, not here, but in another church. They went to an altar and they prayed. The Spirit of God got on them. They went, the power of God got on them. It manifested itself on them. I believe in that. The power of God moved. And they went to the altar and prayed. And the power of God got on them. And a preacher, amen, knelt down beside them. Amen. And said that wasn't the Spirit of God. And the person asked him, then what is it? He said, I don't know. Well, if you're saying that it's not the Spirit of God, then you better have a follow-up answer. If I tell you that that's not the Spirit of God, then I better have know what it is. If I have the authority to identify Deborah that that's not the Spirit of God, then God's going to give me the mind and the knowledge to know what to tell you that it is. That person was hurt. Keep your mouth shut. Don't give half answers. If God's going to tell you something, He's going to tell you the whole story and the whole truth of the matter. In which case, that person would say, well, what is it? And they would say, it's da da God, don't leave me with a half-empty answer. The whole purpose of God, they've been showing someone, is to show someone, not leave them sitting there guessing and scratching their head, dealing with what in the world just happened here. Am I making any sense? I have no idea. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. Verse 11. Romans 3, verse 11. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. Listen. I'm on point. I hope that you can get it. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Verse 13, their throat is an open sepulcher with their tongues. They have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law said, it said to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall not flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is a knowledge of sin. That's desperate. That's a tight spot. Do you see what we're preaching this morning? Do you see what we're preaching this morning? Have in the place of humanity? Have do you see and in what we're pre preaching this morning? The place of a man or a woman? The hopelessness of guilt? Have in the burden of sin? Have in the burden of the world? The law? Amen. But we go into 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. 
Ah, oh, I'm going to read that again. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus, upon all, unto all, and upon all of them that believe. For there is no difference. 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 24, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, His righteousness that He might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. We do the best that we can do and when we fall short and you will fall short you continue to profess you continue to go to church you continue with your ministry you continue praying you continue singing because it's your faith in Christ that has saved you not of yourself any good deeds without salvation without the salvation of Jesus Christ is good works and it will perish it cannot sustain itself but at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. 27, where it is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Question mark. Nay. But by the law of faith. Oh my God, this is way over my head. I'm a simpleton. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Believe on Jesus. You're going to stumble. Believe on Jesus. you got a ways to go. Believe on Jesus in faith through grace. And it will make you whole. But I still got a problem. Believe on Jesus. Continue to profess. Continue to confess. Continue to hold on. I ain't made it yet. I ain't perfect. You never will be. That many falling short of the glory. You sure come on to church. That meant that he that is whole needed not a physician. That meant that I need a physician. I need to come to church. I ain't figured this thing out yet, Jerry. And I'm a preacher. And you come and listen to me every Sunday. Amen. Every Sunday. And I ain't got this thing figured out yet. Amen. But I know one thing. Amen. I'm looking to Jesus Christ. Amen. The Alpha and the Omega. Of the beginning and the end. Amen. The finisher of my faith. I'm going to trip and I'm going to stumble along the way. Amen. But I'll get up and brush myself off. And I'll keep on walking. Sometimes I may have to crawl. And sometimes I may lay there for a little while. Amen. Until a fresh wind blows. Amen. Until I get a sip of that living water. Amen. From the throne of God. Amen. It'll pick me up and I'll go a little while longer. And then I may have to take a rest by the road for a little while. Until I get a sip of that living water. Amen. In Jesus Christ. And one day I see him. And then one day be face to face. And I'll see him as he is. I'll see him as he is. We look up out darkly. We're all a number to be about with cares of this world, shortcomings and despairs, amen, thoughts that come into our minds, amen, deeds that we do, amen, anger and frustration sometimes, amen, the disappointments, amen, in people, and the disappointments that people have in us, amen, I've got a race to run, and you've got one too, and the only way is to believe that Jesus has got the, amen, the finish inside. He has that expected in. You ain't perfect. I ain't perfect. I ain't perfect. I ain't never going to be perfect. I got shortcomings. I get frustrated, angry, agitated. Man, there's sometimes I can smack the taste out of people's mouths. I'm just being honest with you. Amen, I've got a ways to go. Amen, but my journey is not over yet. They ain't laid me in a casket yet. And they ain't marked me down in the ground yet. Amen, there's still work that Christ can do on me. And I believe he'll finish that work on me. And he'll finish it on you, don't you? I've seen.
seen many good people, real life stories. I've seen many good people that had problems and hang ups. Good Christian people went to church, but they had a problem, they had a hang up. Bad feelings, bad habits. But you know what? Before they died, God worked on them, and they wouldn't apologize. They didn't know they was going to die. Or they kicked the habit. They didn't know they was going to die. Or they got the victory over this or the victory over that. And then a few days later, they die. What is it? And then it's Christ that justified them. And then they had a little wrinkle. They had a little spot or a little blemish. But before they died, they then God made it right. Because it's He that justified them. Woo! Glory to God. It's not His will that any should perish. But all come to repentance, especially those that I mean, were called into the fold and accepted his son Jesus Christ and tried to do the best that they could do, but they just fell short. You think he's going to throw you to the wolves because you just fell short? He's going to reach down and he's going to perfect you. He's going to iron that wrinkle out of your white robe. He made that spot. He's going to apply the blood of Jesus to that spot. Amen. And it's going to become white. That sackcloth or white. Amen. It's sheep's wool. Amen. The Bible says clearly that there can be no spot nor blemish. Daddy, there can be no sin that will enter heaven. Do you believe me? Do you hear me this morning? Not one sin will make it to heaven. Not one, not one defilement, not one wrinkle, not one little smudge. That shirt looks pretty white. But I'm sure if you look, you're going to find something on there. Not one blemish. What can I do? You can do nothing but believe that Jesus can. Jesus can and he will. What can wash? Away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank God, nothing but the blood today. It ain't the church of Christ. It ain't Baptist, it ain't Methodist, it ain't Presbyterian, it ain't the Catholic, it ain't the Holiness. Every Holiness ain't the way, Jesus is the way. Every Baptist ain't the way, Jesus is the way. Catholicism ain't the way, Jesus is the way. The Rosary ain't the way, Jesus is the way. Baptism ain't the way, the Tibet and Hat. Jesus is the way. I mean, we got this thing mixed up. Amen. People want to preach perfection. And you got to be perfect. But there's nothing that you can do aside from the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. And before you take your last breath, He'll wash your sins away. That's Jesus being faithful and being just. Perry, I've often said this about Perry. Perry had an addiction to methamphetamine. But before he died, he got saved. He got saved. Oh, my God. But he still wrestled against flesh and blood. He still wrestled, and not against flesh and blood, but again, he wrestled against spirits. He wrestled against the temptation. He told people that he didn't know how much longer he could hold off from taking methamphetamine because he had such an addiction to it. He didn't know how he could fight it off anymore. And wasn't that cold rain night he got shot down? One rainy night he got shot down, but he was already saved. He was wrestling with things and fighting things. And I couldn't imagine that addiction to methamphetamine. He didn't die instantly, but he laid there in that cold rain as it pounded, uh, pounced on his body. And that man shot him a few more times. Uh, and he laid there, didn't kill him instantly, uh, but he laid there for a few more minutes before he died. And don't you know he was a praying? Don't you know the praying had already been done? Amen. That last mile that 
he drove down the road before he pulled into his driveway. Amen. What kind of visitation did he have in his vehicle? Amen. What kind of power did he feel? Amen. As he drove that last mile home, was he talking to the Savior of all mankind? Was he saying, Lord, will you help me one more time? Not knowing that his life was going to end just down the road. Amen. We don't know. That last mile of conversation. We don't know the last hour they've been on earth that somebody may have with God. They sit there and talk to the Lord and nobody ever knows about it. Oh, that last mile. As I've said before, how many times, how many times have we drove down the road to pray? And if we had been in an auto wreck, nobody would have ever known that we spent the last 30 minutes talking to the Lord while we drove down the road. How many people would have never known, everybody, nobody would have ever known, amen, that just before, amen, I've been singing and feeling the presence of the Lord just before that accident. We don't know these things. It's no different than the thief on the cross. Amen, God is not willing that any should perish. The Bible says in Romans 10, I believe it is, that for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Somebody told me years ago, her daddy, she thought her daddy was lost. He was working on a state truck. Somebody, drunk I guess it was, rammed into the back end killed him. She thought he was lost. He had dreams, tormented with dreams that he was lost. Tormented. My daddy's lost. One night, she'd been praying and praying, Lord, let me know. Lord, just let me know. She had a dream one night where she saw her daddy driving the truck. He was driving the state truck. And they saw that man hit him in the back in that truck. And as soon as he hit, he said, oh, God. And since that time, she had peace. That ain't no different than the prayer of the thief on the cross that said, remember me. If instead of him saying, oh, God. If he just said, remember me, that could have been good enough. Hey, I mean, it's the fancy doctors, hey, I mean, the very reverend doctors that'll have you to believe hey, I mean, that that's insufficient. Hey, I mean, but Jesus is all sufficient, even in a microsecond, because it didn't I mean, catch Christ off guard. Hey, I mean, it didn't catch him by surprise. Hey, I mean, he knew when the person was going to come to the last of the life. Oh, I'm kind of close here. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. O oh, wretched man, Romans 7, 24, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. Thank God. In closing, if I can find it. Romans 7, 15. Paul wrote. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would that do, I not. But what I hate, that do I. I'm going to read that again. I kind of for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now 
Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. Amen. We read here the foundation of God standeth sure. Second Timothy two nineteen. Trying to close the foundation which our faith rests. Is this that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them? The great fact on which genuine faith relies is that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and that Christ also hath suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, who himself bear our sins in his own body on the tree. For the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. In one word, the great pillar of the Christian's hope is substitution. The vicarious sacrifice of Christ for the guilty. Christ being made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Christ offering up a true and proper expiatory and substitutionary sacrifice in the room, place, instead of as many as the Father gave him. Say it today, I belong to the Father. I belong to you. Feel like you belong to the Father. Amen. Christ offering up a true and substitutionary sacrifice who are known to God by name and are recognized in their own hearts by their trusting in Jesus. Are you trusting in Jesus today? This is the cardinal fact of the gospel. If this foundation were removed, what could we do? But it standeth firm as the throne of God. We know it. We rest on it. We rejoice in it. And our delight is to hold it to meditate upon it, and to proclaim it. While we desire to be actuated and moved by gratitude for it in every part of our life and conversation, in these days, a direct attack is made upon the doctrine of atonement. Men cannot bear a substitution. They gnash their teeth at the thought of the Lamb of God bearing the sin of man. But we who know by experience the preciousness of this truth will proclaim in defiance of them confidently and unceasingly. We will neither dilute it or change it, nor fritter it away in any shape or fashion. It shall still be Christ, a positive substitute, bearing human guilt and suffering in the stead of men. We cannot, dare not, give it up. For it is our life. And despite every controversy, we feel that nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Every controversy in our life, every setback in our life, Amen, whether known or not known. Uh, amen, we still stand sure today. Uh, amen, that Christ knows the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. Uh, and he has that expected end. Uh, amen, and we have that place called heaven that we can surely attain to. Let's surpass that. Amen, and let's also have works of gold and silver. I don't know how it's going to be. I don't know how it's going to be. But I know that there's going to be judgments. Plural. And I know that though it don't matter now, because we just got to get there, we need to work, labor for the Lord, do good deeds, but be compassionate. 
Be loving and merciful to people. That's part of it. Don't be ugly. There's lots of good Christians that are ugly Christians. You believe that? I mean, when I say good Christians, I mean they go by the letter of the law. You believe that? That's what I mean by good Christians. They go by the letter of the law. But their spirit, they just fall out with people. They don't have mercy and compassion with people. There was a, a, a person years and years ago that kind of turned me off. They were a preacher. And they were a good preacher. I mean, they had the spirit of God, the power of God, and I understand I'm a man. Though sometimes I'm confused about things, as you are. But they got up in front of church and they were there preaching. And when I say they were good, what I mean to say is they, they walked in the power of God. They had lots of good ministries and they led many people to, to Christ. And the Lord really used them. But they put me off one time. They were up uh, uh, preaching and they were talking about how that they were been in San Francisco visiting. And they had an air about them that I just couldn't hardly swallow down. You ever met somebody that had an air about them you just couldn't hardly choke it down? You had a, they had an air about them that just put me off for one thing. I, but they were talking about how that they were in San Francisco and that they had seen some uh, homosexuals and they turned around and looked at him and goes, Yuck! Well, that didn't take a whole lot. I was teetering on the edge anyway, and I was like, ah. Why? Why would you do that? You're a preacher, and you look at somebody and you go, Yuck! No big deal, but it kind of was. I was probably looking for something anyway. But that kind of sealed the deal for me. Because... It's that same grace. Amen. That saved them. Called them into the ministry. Caused them to preach the gospel. Amen. That pulled them from a life that they could have fell very easily into that life. We are here by the grace of God. Whatever is happening to somebody else that ain't happening to you is because of the grace of God. God just didn't lead you down that path or perhaps we overcame that path. We've all got histories and past that could have directed us into a totally different life. Do you agree? I mean, I could have been to the toe. I could be in a penitentiary right now. God could have been dead. We could have been drug addicts out there on a corner somewhere. But it was because of God. Because you've been in church. <laughs> but the grace of God is why we are here in church today as well off as we are. But to look at others and to judge them. And to not have compassion on the poor, poor people. How many times? We need to pray for the lost, church. We need to pray for people that are suffering. I, it breaks my heart sometimes. I'm kind of not, not as compassionate as I need to be sometimes. But amen, we need to pray for people. Amen. That, that we see, that we meet. That God would have mercy on them and save them. Because they've not been this way. And a lot of us have been through a lot of things in our lives. But God has led us through a, the valley. God has led us through dark places. And here we are today, saved and on our way to heaven. Amen. So we see that that struggle is real. Amen. The struggle is real today. I guess that's it. So let's uh, continue to trust the Lord as, as we must. Continue to have compassion and mercy. Continue to realize that it's our belief, amen, in Jesus. Amen. That's going to lead us sure in truth. Amen. Lead us into righteousness. Amen. And, and let Him, Amen, be that light for us in our lives, in our times of darkness, in our times of doubt. Amen. And hold to God's unchanging hand. So let's go ahead and go to prayer at this time. Yes. Do you remember Joe Curry? Joe Curry, yes. His son just died. Josh. Oh, Josh. 
Okay.